Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. Although this is going to be a slightly different kind of video. In this one, I wanted to go through a bunch of adventures that I think would be great to run for Halloween or in the lead up to Halloween. Maybe this is not going to be a one shot, but maybe you're going to run these over the course of the week ahead of time or the two weeks before Halloween as we're just about two weeks ahead. So maybe this is a one shot, a two shot, maybe a three shot sort of thing. Maybe they're longer. Maybe you take bits and pieces up to you. But I think these are great adventures to play in the month of Halloween uh, leading up to uh, the, the day itself. There's a whole bunch of these. I'm not going to go through these in a ton of detail. Most of these I've reviewed before. Some of them I haven't, though. And for those, I'll go through a little bit more slowly. But in this one, first, I'm going to start with Castle Corpenhalla. This is the whole adventure. It's a one page of the entirety of essentially Castle Ravenloft. But it's all right here. Much simplified, small random encounter table with an overview with the rumors and the treasures. And that's it. It's sort of Ravenloft if your goal is to make money instead of escape or kill the Count or whatever it is like that. But if you know the castle from the Ravenloft adventure, you basically have it here. It's essentially laid out in, in, in pretty much the exact same way. It's just simplified and seen from this perspective. This is for old school essentials, but this document has three different pages. You have the Old School Essentials page, you have the Morkborg page, and you have the Dungeon Reavers page. So essentially, if you want to use any of those systems, you can. Old School Essentials is the one I'm familiar with, which is why I leave it on this one, but you can use all three. It's a great little adventure. If you want to run a one-shot in Castle Ravenloft, you guys are going to play on Halloween or a couple days before or something, you're like, hey, let's do a quick one-shot. We're just going to drop you guys into this big spooky castle, and we'll, we'll play it from there. I, I think Castle Corporate Hall is a great way to run Ravenloft as a one-shot. Now, I know that Sly Flourish has his, Mike Shea has his um, way of running Ravenloft as a one-shot. I think there's an even better way to do it uh, later on, and I think we'll go through in this video. There's an even better one way to play a one-shot in Castle Ravenloft, but I'll come to that later. This is a great one, though. If you want a one-pager for any of those systems or just something you can adapt easily, highly recommend Castle Corp and Hollow. The second one is The Lair of the Alchemist, which is a dungeon crawl inspired by the island of Dr. Moreau. The reason I picked this one is because it has a lot of body horror. You're going to see that theme come up again and again in these adventures, body horror. You know, D&D, RPGs, role-playing games, adventure games are by kind of by definition survival horror, right? Unless you're playing 5th edition. But if you're playing old, old school games, there's sort of a sense of survival horror already built in. And if you don't name the creatures and you just describe them, I mean, it's pretty horrifying. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that, but instead of saying you get attacked by five goblins, you just describe what a goblin looks like. Most of the time, it's actually really creepy, even something as simple as a goblin. And some of the creatures in these adventures get way creepier than a goblin, so I highly recommend that you guys play into that. You know, playing a horror campaign, playing a horror adventure is, is as much about tone as it is about content. So I think uh, that's, that's something else, but <laughs> these are good. This is good content as well. Essentially, it's just a small dungeon crawl you're going through trying to get some treasure, trying to deal with the creatures in here. The tone isn't overtly horror, but it is that sort of body horror that we get from something like the Island of Dr. Moreau. I think it's quite good. Um, and you get a lot of really creepy creatures, and a lot of weird alchemy, and you got a lot of weird, bizarre things. And again, you could play it, the art here is kind of whimsical, you could play it that way, but I, I think if you played it as a darker adventure, you easily could. Morelius himself is pretty creepy, and what he's doing, what he wants, is pretty creepy. So. Uh, I've reviewed this one before in another video, but I think The Lair of the Alchemist would be a great horror-themed adventure for Halloween. The next one, by the way, I'm going from shortest to longest. These are going to get longer as I go. The next one shouldn't surprise anybody. It's A Very Merry Shadowween, which is one of my favorite adventures of all time. I think this is a fantastic adventure. I've reviewed it now like three times for different videos, or it's been featured in like three videos, so I'm not going to go through it again in detail. But Highly recommend this one. I mean, it's explicitly Halloween. It would be perfect for younger players if they are okay with a little bit more spookiness, um, a little bit more, you know, darkness in their, in their whimsy, but it is so whimsical. It's so delightful. Feels like Halloween. Um, absolutely through and through. I think you play this on a Halloween adventure. It would be great. By the way, shout out to one of my subscribers who recommended um, that I do this video. I forget his name at the moment, but he said, hey, you should do a video with a bunch of... Um, Halloween-themed adventures for us. So I think that's a great idea. Thank you for the idea. So this was for the Spooky Tales, or the Weird Tales game jam. Uh, it's just one of the best adventures from that. It's certainly one of the best adventures that I've read in a long time. I think A Very Merry Shadowween is great. Highly recommend you guys play this on or near Halloween. 
The next is Detour to the City of Torment. This is another one that I've just re uh, reviewed recently. This one isn't more explicitly Halloween, but it is nightmarish and it is horrific. And I think you could easily have this be like the, the, the players are going through something and suddenly they get zapped into this nightmare realm and they have to deal with it. And so, you know, play up the whole nightmare thing, play up the whole horror and darkness. And it would be something like, oh, I don't know what that, that, that old movie, um, is it called Nightmare City? I forget what it's called. Dark City, maybe? Maybe Dark City. Um, something like that. Or something like the Hellraiser series. I don't know. I don't really watch those. But I think you could play something like that, right? Where this is like a horrific, you know, hell dimension where people have to sort of escape and survive. I think the ideas in here would be great for something like that. So, again, Detour to the City of Torment. I've reviewed it in another video, so I'm not going to go into detail here. But I recommend you guys check it out. The next one is Onkeg, which is something I've just reviewed. This was for the Knave Game Jam in the Minds No One Can Hear You Scream. It's obviously a take on Alien. It's really, really good. It's, again, body horror. It has that um, self-aware quality. It knows it's just leaning into Alien. I mean, the characters are just taken straight out of it. You have Jonesy. You have Lizard instead of Newt. You have Wayland, who's the clay golem. Um, the Brain Flare Nemo Fox instead of Necromorph. It's, uh, it's a... It's a, it's a Mind Flayer, Onkeg Blend, uh, really, really cool, uh, really, really cool. And you're going through a mine, there's a whole bunch of horrible, horrifying things down here. You're going to have a lot of gro gruesome descriptions to your players, but it's also more aliens in that you're going down and hacking creatures, right? So it starts off alien, it goes into aliens, maybe it's both, plays up that ho horror side of things. So I would say it's much more, instead of being like one of these things hunting you, it's a whole bunch. So in that sense, it's more like aliens than alien, but... It has a lot of the callbacks. It has a lot of that tone, which you're looking for. So I think this would be very spooky. If you play it upright and you, you lean into the descriptions, very evocative, I think this would be a great adventure. So Onkeg, I highly recommend you guys check out this one as well. Really, really good. And again, I've reviewed it just recently, so I'm not going to go through it again. Highly recommend that one. The next one is not something I have reviewed. It's the Toy Mancer's Folly. This one is really creepy. It's like Chucky, right? I mean, you're playing with creepy cursed dolls. You're playing with uh, horrifying things like that. And of course, that's that's right up in the Halloween um, world. Um, essentially, this is, again, not one I've reviewed recently. But you can go check out Questing Beast Review, but he just did it a couple days ago. He talked about this one in detail. I think it's one of his favorites from the Game Jam. I can see why. It's a horror module, as it says here in the beginning. You're dealing with... Um, Great advice, actually, right away. It says, uh, horror doesn't come from fear, it comes from discomfort. There's a really good distinction between horror and terror, dread and terror, and I think in, 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 video, or in, in movies and in video games and things like that, they can get the jump scare going, they can get the terror going. But in descriptive, the best sort of horror novels, the best sort of horror RPGs, you're dealing with dread. And that's that growing feeling of discomfort and unease and that something's wrong and you can't quite put your finger on it. You can't quite figure it out. You can't quite solve it. That's that feeling of dread. You want to play that up as opposed to like jump scare. Gotcha. Horrifying description. You can do that, but that should be the payoff of a long buildup of dread. And I think that's what this advice is saying. It's really good. Essentially, you have this toy maker who accidentally <laughs> used uh, a dead dryad or a vengeful dryad inside the wood that he was using for his toys and it wasn't good and so the dryad uh, brought those toy puppets to life and um, turned his daughter into marionette or recast her into a marionette and so now uh, basically he has to go around killing people he has to use his puppets as dead marionettes to kill people um, to give their life to the trees and if he does enough his daughter will go free and so he lures people there and puts them into toys, and then they are consumed by the Dryad's justice. So you have some creepy toys um, going around. Really horrifying stuff. Um, there's a mechanic on panic, which is great. Uh, 3,000 years of life are needed to repay the debt. The remaining years are captured in limbo by the Dryad's heart. Uh, if a recast comes under the Dryad's charm or loses hope, their body becomes part of the house and their ears lost forever to the heart. The debt is almost repaid now. Just 10 more recasts will do it. And then there's this dollhouse that's becoming more and more pristine. It's just, it's really cool. It's a really great adventure, really well laid out, creepy creatures, cool encounters and shifts. If you guys know the Nave system, it plays with it very, very well. Again, there's a full review of it on Questing Beast, so I'm not going to go through it in too much detail, but I highly recommend you guys check it out. Really, really good adventure, really, really horrifying. A little paper doll at the back. Great for a Halloween adventure if you like that, you know, Puppet Master, Chucky vibe of things. I think this would be a great one. And the next one is a bit of a funny one. H is for Helmo. Uh, I love this. This is just essentially like a, a tongue-in-cheek horror version of 
popular TV, Mr. Rogers, Sesame Street, uh, you know, the Muppets, all of those things. Sesame Hill, a small neighborhood in the big city, has been taken over by furry monsters. Their leader, Helmo, demands that once a week a group of people enter Sesame Hill to serve the monsters until they're released at the end of the day. This is a hilarious one. So Mr. Rogers is one of these people who is there to help Fred Rogers, a community leader. An adjoining neighborhood has gathered a team to infiltrate and rescue any captive neighbors, the players of that team. So it's really funny. There's this guy named Growler. He starts off, and before your players enter the hill, you're supposed to choose a letter and a number, and then you play that way throughout the game. You try to highlight that number and that letter as you go through, just like Sesame Street, right? It's really funny. Um, you're playing an episode, so it's sort of recurring. You come back again if you want. You can play multiple sessions, and it's a different session. It's a different adventure in that world of hell, you know, of, of Sesame Hill. Um, there's the letter of the day and the different words that might be associated with those letters, and you try to play them up. Um, different monster NPCs you can interact with. There's the Countess, um, a short energy vampire with an obsession with counting things, droning, the candy monster, Birdzilla, an enormous talking yellow bird, melancholy, the grump, Helmo himself, Snuffles, Zoe. I think this is hilarious. Um, if you ever watched Sesame Street when you were growing up, or Mr. Rogers, or anything like that, if you're part of that, that whole generation, that group, then this is just a hilarious adventure. Um, you know, it's just... <laughs> it's just totally tongue-in-cheek, as I said. It's not going to be horrifying exactly, but it is funny. And it has that sort of like, you know, you could play it as a horror adventure, but it's not really going to be um, horrific. But I think it would be a funny thing to do for like a Halloween, especially if you have a certain kind of group of people. H is for Helmo. I recommend you guys check it out. Again, I'll put a link below to where you can get it. All right, the next couple are from DCC. These are all horror uh, sets. The first one is Creep Scrag. Creep. This one is great. It's a sort of like, it's a sort of a sandbox. It's more like Alien, actually, because you have this one creature on board a ship. It's a level zero adventure, too, so your characters are very, very frail. They're the, they're the crewmen of the ship, which has this creature coming out and eating, and, and it's unstoppable, essentially, right? I mean, the ship is called the Nostro instead of the Nostromo. It's also in that vein of Alien. It says so explicitly in the introduction. And you're, you're just trying to catch this thing. You're trying to find it. Uh, Every third turn, the creature's going to attack some PC. They're going to eat one or two and then disappear. It's collecting their livers. Um, how to improve chances of survivability if you want to make a creature, if you want to make people, you know, survive the last boss fight battle. Um, it's really, really cool. I think this is a great adventure. So you start off with some NPCs. You start about the crew, and then as the as the um, players go through, it gets you know worse and worse and worse. Um, there's a lot of reading, and DCC adventures have a lot of you know text that you're reading through. Um, it's sort of old school in that design. It's non, it's non, uh, there's a word that one of my subscribers used at one point and I really liked it. It's a uh, non dexterous writing. I forget how he put it. It was great, but I like, it's sort of like that, right? It's not terribly flexible. It's very, very, um, you got a lot to go, you got a lot to cover in all these DCC adventures, but I think this would be a fantastic adventure. Again, it's in the same style. Here's the map of the ship. It's in the same style of something like Ankeg. But it's much more that bottle-trapped feeling. You're here, you're stuck, you're not getting off. You're level zero characters, so you're all frail. Um, which is good. It's both a good and a bad thing, right? How horrific can their descriptions of death be? The players are going to be a little less precious with them. They're going to be a little less protective of them. They're going to be willing to let them take risks, go into the dark room to have that horror moment. You know, players are going to play things up like that. So I think this is a great adventure for that reason. Highly recommend you guys check out Creep Scrag Creep. Um, really good adventure. So it's a level zero funnel. I always like funnels too, and this is a good one. Um, this is good for, you know, outside of Halloween, but I think especially in Halloween, it's a great one. Okay, we still got some more guys. As I said, there's a whole bunch of adventures here, but we're trying to trying to go through them pretty quick. The next one is going to be the Sinister Sutures of the Semptress. Semptress. This is a level six adventure, so it's a little bit higher, but the kind of descriptions you're going through are also pretty horrific. It's another one of these DCC horror adventures. I got a big DCC humble bundle back in the day, and Every so often I go back and read through them and I'm like, wow, there's a whole bunch of good ones in here. Um, and I remembered that there was a whole bunch of horror ones, so I went through and found those for this video. So there's a whole bunch, uh, a couple more that I have here as well. The Sinister Sutures of the Semstress is a horror-themed adventure. The House of Tattered Remnants. There's this thing that's born from mankind's subconscious fear, fashioning herself whole cloth from the terrors and phobias of a hundred cultures. She is the mother of horrors. Uh, so this is a really horrifying thing, right? She has this, uh, um, she's going to break free. you got to stop her. She has a dimensional cocoon, which is the House of Tattered Remnants. Um, any patchwork stalker can create a doorway between the House of Tattered Remnants and the physical world once per night. 
So there's this way of getting in there. There's the unraveling that's trying to bring about. Um, the patchwork nature offends the eye and breaks people down, makes them go crazy. It's sort of like a, um, it's sort of like a uh, H.P. Lovecraft, not quite a sanity system, but this sort of stuff goes as you go crazy, as time breaks down, as you break down, you have these physical manifestations which starts to go crazy, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, how to start? How to get into the house of tattered remnants, the realm of the sempstress, and what it's like, the spuppeteers. Um, looking at what happens if you look outside, right? And there's some great descriptions here. So this is house, it's adrift in the multiverse, but what happens if you look out? You get some like, you know, Lovecraftian descriptions. A city of non-Euclidean geometry fashioned from cyclopean stone blocks, hoary with age, black winged forms flutter in the skies above it. An endless cemetery where titanic maggots swallow swaths of graveyard earth in a single gargantuan bites. The cathedral-like stomach and intestines of a dead, rotting god. A grim landscape filled with gibbets, gallows, plague pits, and shambling forms that feed on carrion. These are great descriptions. Really, really good. You could, you could steal these from any game if you go to a horrible nightmare dimension. Great descriptions of encounters. Once again, it's not terribly um, flexible. Um, dexterous in its descriptions. You're dealing with a lot of reading for any of these adventures. So this is something you wouldn't want to run on the fly. You'd want to make sure you understood the adventure first. But I think you could easily run it as a one-shot. There's the heart of the house, the sempstress herself. Um, eyeballs and witch's hair. Horrifying descriptions, horrifying things. You get the, the classic maps of the DCC adventures in the back, which I really like. And then you have um, some treasure tables, how do you fight the final boss, and ending the adventure. The Sinister Sutures of the Sempstress. Sempstress, that's a hard word for me to say. But it's a great adventure. Dungeon Call Classics. If you guys have never seen this one before, I highly recommend you check it out. The Corpse That Love Built. <laughs> this is another one. This is essentially uh, Frankenstein or the Bride of Frankenstein or something like that. It's playing on that uh, idea. Now, I didn't I didn't include uh, Professor Dungeon Master's take on Frankenstein, but I think you guys could easily run that too. That's a great horror-themed adventure. I, I recommend checking that out. He, he has uh, videos on it on his channel, so um, you guys should check that out too. But but this is a you know a DCC take on this whole idea of, of Dr. Frankenstein and all that. It's what you might expect, right? Geisterblut. <laughs> um... So it's not terribly surprising. It's a, it's a combat game. You're going through. You're trying to you know get to him and destroy him and then the monster, the beast. But it's got a really cool description. It's very memorable. Um, the place that you're fighting is very memorable. Like The, the players are going to keep this one in mind. It could keep the tone right um, if you're playing sort of the horrifying, horrifying, you know, um, <laughs> the definitely straight out of the Brides of Frankenstein, or the, the, the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, you have to keep the tone right, right? It might be easy to mess, mess this up, but it's got a great description of this colossus you're going into, going up and down into the lab and going up to the the, the, the light and the hand. Like, it's a really cool, really cool adventure in a lot of ways. Um, lots of gross descriptions, lots of creepy descriptions, and it's a DCC adventure, so it's lots of fun literal levers to pull and some not-so-literal levers to pull. Um, just some really engaging stuff in this adventure. And again, uh, if you haven't ever checked out DCC Adventures generally, you should do that. But this one in particular is a great one, and it would be good for Halloween. Again, it's it's sort of um, it's sort of I, I don't know how to put it exactly. It's not going to be like the most terrifying adventure. It's going to be gruesome. It's going to maybe unsettle some people. But you're dealing with Frankenstein and that sort of whole idea of Frankenstein's monster, and so you're, you're you know you you know what you're getting into. And players tend to know once they realize what's going on, they're going to oh yeah okay, and they get into that mindset. Um, it's not going to be as undermining, perhaps, as some of these other adventures. The next one is It Consumes, which is basically a take on that old movie, The Stuff, where the players, where the creatures, um, this thing from space uh, becomes like the food of the village and people start, or the, uh, the town people stop eating it. Uh, in fact, this, the, the, it's called the Stufa. That's the, uh, the stuff that people are eating, uh, tasting the Stufa. And then there's the Stufi or the people who are, who are eating it and becoming warped and mutated and changed. And what happens you know, to them, they start to, you know, they start to mutate and, and become horrifying. Basically, there's this mining colony that found a vein of ore. They found this bubbly, creamy stuff to, substance. And as curiosity would have it, they tasted it and found it was sweet and addictive. And so it starts to spread. Very, very interesting uh, and horrifying. And as you get through the descriptions, basically, you're going through into this valley. It's a perfect setup, right? You're going across into this sort of um, 
isolated village, mining town. Horrifying things are starting to happen here. People are starting to change. People are starting to get addicted to this stuff. Players are probably going to not want to taste it, but there's rules for what happens if they start to. So, and of course, one of the th one of the features is that once you eat it, you want other people to eat it too. So this little boy Jason's like, I wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't eat it. They're making me, trying to make me eat it. And then they come out to fight him. And that's sort of a good way of getting it into the adventure, right? The players are like, well, we're not going to let this little kid be forced into eating this horrifying stuff, so we're going to stop him, right? Even though the parents seem very nice. But you just have a bunch of horrifying encounters, things getting worse and worse until you get up to the mine itself and you go down into it, and it's some really gru gruesome and grotesque stuff here. Um, but it's a great dungeon. It's a bigger dungeon, as you can see, so this is probably not going to be a one-shot. If you wanted to play this, you'd probably want to play it over a couple sessions. One in the town, one as they start, and then maybe they get up into the mines, and then you probably play through the mines a bit and get to the final, final encounter. Um, the Temple of the Stufa, the Meditation Chambers, Wave of Stufi, the Grand Scheme, the Pump Room, Fountain of Evocation. Uh, there's this creature, essentially, right? The Stufa is actually like this thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's intelligent. It, it wants to spread itself. And The Deception of Chocolate Chip Carol. So there's this Chocolate Chip Carol, is, is a halfling. And uh, you, if you don't save her earlier, then she can be... Uh, there's an ambush in the tavern. If you don't save her there, then she can get chained up down here. And if she's down here, then she's been turned into one of these things. And so she, you free her, you might free her. And if you do, then she turns on you and becomes this horrifying description. And as she changes, it's horrible too. So it's, it's great. The Lake of Stufa is a vast cavern that stretches into the shadows and beyond. It has innumerable hit points and cannot be defeated by simply attempting to fight it. There are two cultists with lanterns. One ancient priest walks between three sets of stairs. How do you stop it? Well, there are ways of breaking down the columns... Um, crushing the thing and trapping it forever. And then the players have to get out if they do that. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, but that's basically it, right? How, how deep is this thing? If you want this to be a harder, bigger adventure, it says, is it the end? Is there, a, is there a, still a Stufi among the party? Right, maybe maybe secretly one of them got transformed. You could e easily turn it into one of those like horror movie cliffhangers at the very end, right, if you wanted. <laughs> you don't have to, but you could. So It Consumes is a fantastic adventure. I think this is a, a really, you could do it pretty gruesomely. Again, it's body horror, but it's dealing with it in a kind of creepy way. It's probably not what the players are going to expect, right? Probably going to expect something haunted or zombies or, you know, d abandoned mining town. Oh, it's probably going to be undead that they've unleashed or something like that. And probably not going to expect this. So you could really spring it on them and it would be really pretty gruesome. The next is going to be a bit surprising to people. It's the barkeep on the borderlands. The reason I say it's, it's surprising is because it's just a pub crawl, right? It has nothing to do with Halloween or anything like that. But I think it's because it's the Raves of Chaos, you could easily make this into a Halloween adventure. All you say is that this coincides with that there are two events that occur, costumes and drinking. And so just make everybody in the town dress up, right? Make it like a Halloween adventure. Maybe they go door to door, and that's part of the whole thing. Instead of trick-or-treating, you're bar crawling, and everyone's in costume. And then you could have this sort of other level of, of, of fun to it as people are hiding in costumes and switching costumes, and it's harder to tell who's who and what's a what and what a threat is. I think that would be great. Uh, it would add another level. Now, it would add another level of confusion, but I think that would be great. So I think you could run Barkeep on the Borderlands as a Halloween adventure fairly easily, and it would be really fun. Um, Definitely, definitely a fun time. If you're if you're in for a light-hearted Halloween, where you're playing D and D while you wait for trick or treaters to come to the door, right? You, uh, you hand out candy, but in the in the kitchen or living room, you're playing this. I think that would be great. It would be, it would be a very memorable night. The next is, I think, the best way to run Ravenloft, certainly as a short adventure, and that's the Count, the Castle, and the Curse. I've talked about this one before. It's people are starting to catch on to this one. I think hopefully this ha Halloween season, as people start to play horror adventures, it'll catch on even more. The Count, the Castle, and the Curse is fantastic. It's, it's for Shadow Dark. It's a great way of running uh, Ravenloft as a one-shot. I think it's better than uh, Castle Corp and Hala. I think it's better than Mike Shea's version of Ravenloft in a Night. I know it's different. It's not the same thing. People are going to, you know, if you want the Ravenloft vibe, you go with Mike Shea's. But this is, a, I think, a more fun way of doing that. Again, I've reviewed this in a couple videos before, so I'm not going to go into detail. But the, the escalating encounter system, the stress level, the timing of the adventure. I, I think the escalating encounters is by far my, my favorite mechanic from this that I want to lift and put in other games. Um, the stress mechanic is pretty good too. Progressive vampirism is fun. The trinkets and the various ways that those reduce stress, it's a great idea. But the timer is made 
great use of. You have to get out of here before midnight and you can play that as a real time game. So you start at say seven o'clock in the evening, you start at eight o'clock in the evening and you say, guys, we're, we're done at midnight. That's it. You play until actual midnight on Halloween. I think that would be a fantastic way to do it. Um, and it's so easy to navigate. Again, you read through this once or twice and maybe even just once and you can easily run it again and again because of how these maps are connected and because of you see where, you know, where each room is relative to the other rooms around it. You don't know, you don't have to go far. Every room gets its own page. Every, pay, every room has a map of where it is relative to the other rooms. And so you just have very, very easily navigatable, navigable uh, rooms. You could easily print this out, or if you don't want to print it out, if you're playing online or something, you just have it in a two-page spread. You have everything right as you need it. Brilliant. Totally, totally brilliant. So Castle Corp and Halla is great, don't get me wrong. Uh, Ravenloft is great, don't get me wrong, but the Count, the Castle, and the Curse is the most creative, the most interesting way, I think, to run this. Second to last, we have The Weird That Befell Drig Bolton. This is by Gavin Norman and Greg Gorgamilk. This is from back in the day. This is Dolmenwood before Dolmenwood. This is no longer a part of the Dolmenwood world as it's being released. And I'm glad of that because this doesn't feel like Dolmenwood at all to me. This feels like something out of left field. It doesn't feel like that fairy tale world. Um, in fact, it's not even really in Dolmenwood. It takes place north of Dolmenwood out in the plains. It's essentially like that stuff adventure it consumes. Essentially, there's this meteor that crashed down into this city. And there was this red goop, and people have started to eat it, and it, they think it's a gift, they think it's delicious, and it's, but it's actually sort of transforming them into the organs, basically, of this star metal meteor creature that has crashed into the world, and it's mutating the world, it's changing everything. Um, and so you're going through this village trying to discover, it's very Lovecrafty, and it's very, um, you know, the color out of space, it's very the stuff. <laughs> So that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with these horrific in transformations, weird, bizarre transformations, because it affects things differently. Um, it affects living material, non-living material. It affects animals and people. Uh, it's just really, really bizarre. If you happen to have this one already, um, I think you could be, you'd be, you could do worse than running it for Halloween. I don't think I will, <laughs> but uh, I think a lot of people might think, hey, this is a decent Halloween adventure because again, it's so weird, it's so bizarre. You could, you could run it in a very creepy way in a tone. It's kind of funny and whimsical at times, but you could cut that, that tone out or cut it down, or you could run it as sort of a whimsical, funny Halloween adventure. But I think it's just, it's leaning into the body horror. It's leaning into the, the bizarre. It's leaning into the undermining and, and disturbing to a degree that I think, you know, mostly I'm not going to run, <laughs> but I think a lot of people might actually enjoy it. So it's got, you know, these horrible creatures, it's got all of this stuff going on. So again, you can check out the weird that befell Drake Bolton. As I said, I'm really glad that this is no longer in the Dolmenwood world. It just doesn't make any sense to me as a, a tonal fit. It doesn't fit at all. Um, but as, an, as a separate kind of adventure, I think it's, it has its place. And last but not least, we have Woodfall, which is a dark fantasy mini setting. This is less of an adventure and more of a, as it says, a mini setting. So essentially you have this town called Woodfall, which is run by witches. And then you have the swamp and you have different factions and you have different adventures and stuff like that. It's a great, uh, it's a great setting for, uh, I would say like a Halloween game. It feels a little bit like Halloween Town or something like that from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's kind of, you know, there's these weird creatures that are there. They're not... Um, uh, they're not uh, normal, right? You're leaving the kingdom entering self-governed witch territory. I think, again, if you put this as like a, a sub-plane, a Halloween plane, um, make it Chris, make it Halloween town, right? I think it would make total sense. It's a, it's a town run by witches, but there are, there are lots of monsters who have made their homes here. It's in a swamp. There are these really funny buildings. And uh, I think, again, you could play it as sort of like a weird nightmare adventure where players are like, wait, how did we end up here? And you're in this weird other dimensional, everything's kind of dark and shifted and, and witchy. Uh, and there are funny things like mask shops. <laughs> you can get different masks that each do different things. You can get hats and the hats do different things. Um, you know, witches hats and witches, witches things like that. There's, there's a thieves guild in town, a spell sharing society, potions. Um, I think Questing Beast has done a full review of this one too, so I'm not gonna go into it too much, but it, it's a great, great idea as a whole list of NPCs, it gets a whole setting. So you can, we could run an adventure here for a one shot, or you could play a few games here if you wanted. There's a whole region to have adventures in with the different factions, different relationships in those factions, um, lots of creepy things out in the woods, lots of fun things out in the woods, a goblin punk fortress out there, uh, the spike clan of goblins, 
the lonely troll, who's kind of nice. He's not actually or not, not she's not actually too bad. The frogmen, the Revolutionary Corpse Council, <laughs> the communists. Uh, that's really really funny. Um, Brother number one, Rotsky, Steel Grem Gremlin, the Throne Man, and Vlad. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, the Bog Witches, Cult of the Stag. Anyway, you got a whole bunch of cool stuff in here, and uh, I think it'd be a fun little little setting to run for Halloween. All right, guys, well, that's about a whole bunch of different adventures and settings and, and ideas and places of inspiration. I think you could run any number of fun things with these. Now, this is just obviously, there are tons and tons of horror adventures out there, and almost any D&D adventure can be made into a horror adventure with the proper tone. Because again, like we're dealing with these horrific nightmarish monsters in any campaign. Um, even a dragon, if you think about it, is pretty horrific. So you could easily run any adventure as a horror-themed adventure if you run it with a certain tone. But if you're looking for outside the box, a little bit more strange, a little bit less expected, you know, not the usual horror adventures that you're looking for, I think these are the ones to look at. Uh, amongst many others, don't. This is not an ex exhaustive list, but these are the ones that stood out to me when I went through the adventures that I have. If you guys can think of any more, please share them in the comments because I think that'd be really helpful. I know I usually don't say, you know, <laughs> I try not to say share stuff in the comments because I hate that, but I, I actually do mean it for this video because I think it'd be great to have suggestions for people who want to run Halloween adventures. So if you do have one that people can look at, put it in the comments below. Uh, I think it'd be very, very helpful. All right, guys. Well, hope this has been interesting. Uh, happy Halloween to everybody who's going to be celebrating it and having some fun and spooky, uh, spooky adventures on it. And I'll see you all in another video.